What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released iOS 15 beta 7 to registered developers just one week after the release of beta 6. And for public beta testers, you should be seeing beta 7 within the next 24 hours. And like usual, I will keep you posted on Twitter exactly when that does get released. Now, in addition to this iOS release, we also got iPadOS 15 beta 7, watchOS 8 beta 7, and tvOS 15 beta 7. Meanwhile, for macOS, we still do not have macOS Monterey beta 6 yet. So I would expect that very soon. They are running a little behind with macOS Monterey. But of course, in this video, we're talking all about iOS and iPadOS and what's new. So starting off with the size of this update, you can see here beta 7 came in at 659.3 megabytes on my iPhone 12 Pro Max. And like usual, that size will vary depending on your device and the version you're coming from. But that was the size coming from beta 6. Now, if we go into our settings, general about 15.0, we can see the build number here for beta 7 is 19A5337A. So we have an A at the end of the build number here on beta 7, which is a very good sign. And this is really the first sign we've seen so far throughout these beta stages that we are approaching a final release. So that is exciting. And we'll talk more about that near the end of this video. All right, so now what is new here in iOS 15 beta 7? And there's really not a ton. This is mainly a bug fix update. However, there are a few changes that are very minor. So the first one is if we go into our settings and go to our iCloud, and then to the iCloud section right here, you will see that private relay now shows as beta. And when you tap on that, you can see you get this little prompt down here that's new that says private relay is currently in beta. And it basically just tells you that it may not work properly. And in the release notes, Apple says this, iCloud private relay will be released as a public beta to gather additional feedback and improve website compatibility. So private relay is going to ship on iOS 15 when it gets released to the public as a beta. And we should see that, you know, progress out of beta throughout the iOS 15 stages over the next several months. Also in beta seven, we finally have a fix. If we go into our display and brightness section right here and under appearance from betas one through six, it showed the old iOS 14 wallpaper. So you can see there, those are the iOS 14 default wallpapers, but now in beta seven, it has finally been updated with the default iOS 15 wallpapers. So not sure what took Apple so long, but that has been updated and fixed here in beta seven. Also, if we go into the focus section right here and then go into a focus and then go to focus status, you could see that we have a fix for the overlapping text bug that we had in beta five. So you can see up top there, it was just overlapping and that was the case for home screen and pretty much every setting, it was just overlapping and it would not be fixed by anything. It would just always come back. You can see even for lock screen, all of those were bugged out in beta six, but now they have been fixed here in beta seven. And then going back to settings and then to sounds and haptics and to headphone safety, you will see that the headphone notifications toggle has been removed here in beta seven. So it used to be a kill switch there where you could turn it on or off, but that has been removed for whatever reason here in beta seven. And then another very, very minor change is if we go into our settings and into accessibility and into voiceover and then down to quick settings, you can see that the quick settings are no longer in alphabetical order again. So they've kind of flip flopped around with this and I don't know, it's just a very small thing I noticed, but you can see now there's an S up top and it's not in alphabetical order, whereas it was here in beta five. Now, like I was mentioning earlier, this seventh beta is very much focused on bug fixes and just resolving some of the issues that have been outstanding for a while. So Apple has quite a few resolved issues in the release notes. And one of them, actually there's two right here for Safari. So you can see it says, Safari extensions now correctly appear in the smart search field when show separate tab bar is selected. So this is for iPad OS when you have the separate tab bar the Safari extensions now show correctly. And then also the clear button in the search bar is no longer clipped on iOS. So I never had this issue, but some people did have an issue where the clear button would be clipped off and kind of cropped off and it looked very bad and buggy, but that has been addressed here in the seventh beta if you were facing that. Also, if you use a VPN and you were having issues on beta six, those should be resolved here in beta seven. So you can see in the release notes, Apple says VPN apps now connect if they use a private API that no longer exists in iOS 15. Apple also mentions that you can now switch to a focus other than do not disturb using Siri. So I've actually been able to do this in beta six, so I'm not really sure what's new here if it just wasn't working for some people but if you want to use you know switch to a different focus mode using siri you can now do that in beta 7 if you were not able to before however i did notice that you're not able to 
tell Siri to switch to a custom mode. So if you made like a custom mode, you can see here recording a video, you will not be able to switch to this focus mode using Siri. It has to be one of the default ones like personal work, sleep, driving, or gaming. Also mentioned as a resolved issue is that you can now add additional participants to a phone call while using a 3G cellular network. So if anybody is still using 3G out there, I guess you can now add additional participants. I'm not sure if that was just bugged out or what, but that has also been resolved. And then one other thing that's not mentioned in the release notes, but I did notice is that the issue with Twitter where when you would close out of it and then you would try to open it up, it would just crash on its first launch and they would be fine after that has been fixed. At least it appears so here in beta seven. So I've not had Twitter crash one time on launch. Whereas before in beta six, you know, Twitter was acting normal. It was not crashing near as much, but it would crash when I would go to launch it for the very first time. So that was something I noticed and that has been fixed here in beta seven. At least I hope so. I will let you guys know for sure in my follow up this weekend, but it appears that that issue with Twitter might be fixed here. But as far as banking applications go, I cannot comment on everybody yet, but I know that my bank, I did test it here on beta seven and it's still not working properly. I can't use face ID with my banking application. That was really ever since like beta three. So I don't know what's going on there, but a lot of these developers will have to update their apps. And again, it may take until the final release of iOS 15 before your banking apps work properly. So yeah, not really a ton of new features or changes here in beta seven, no additional changes to Safari or anything like that, like I thought we might see. But again, this is mainly going to be a bug fix update and just kind of an update that's more focused on the performance and the battery life. So let's go ahead and talk about that performance. And I thought that the performance on beta six was fine. It wasn't anything outstanding. It was pretty much the same as beta five to me. I did have some issues with third party applications like Robinhood, Twitter, and Facebook specifically, but you know, those could be resolved here in beta seven. Time will tell. I will let you guys know in my follow-up video, but aside from those apps, you know, kind of lagging and crashing, I didn't really have have any issues in terms of just overall raw performance. So performance, I would expect to see a bump here in beta seven as well. And actually, if you go into our Geekbench scores right here, you can see we got a pretty solid score on the multi-core. So we got a 4159 and then a 1597 on the single core. So nothing really too special on the single core, but a 4159 on multi-core is very impressive. That is compared to the 3993 that we got there in beta six. So a nice improvement and a minor decline here in the single core. But again, these don't always tell the full story, but it is nice to see a little bump there in the multi-core score on beta seven. And I did just want to point out that I've tried to make Twitter crash multiple times throughout this video and I cannot get it to crash. So hopefully that's a sign that the Twitter crashing bug has been resolved that we've been facing pretty much throughout the entire iOS 15 beta. So we'll have to wait and see on that. But anyways, let's go ahead and move on to the battery life because battery life here on beta seven seems like it's going to be very good because I've been on 92% ever since I started recording this video and has not gone down 1%. So I would expect battery life to be really good. As far as beta six, the beta six battery was pretty much the exact same as beta five for me on my iPhone 12 pro over here and on my iPad pro, which I've been using a lot lately. I would expect beta seven to be even better than beta six because we should have less bugs, which less bugs in theory should lead to less battery drain. So I would expect battery life to be better here in beta seven, but I will let you guys know for sure in my follow up video on Saturday. So stay tuned for that. All right. So now what is next for Apple. So today is August 25th and we are on a weekly release schedule. So we do have an A at the end of the build number, which does, it could really mean multiple things. So we'll talk about that in a minute, but we are on a weekly release schedule. So I would expect to see beta eight next week, which should also have an A at the end of the build number. So I would expect multiple A builds before we get the final of iOS 15. So next week, possibly on September 1st, or maybe August 31st sometime, early to mid next week, we should see iOS 15 beta eight. And then the week after that, which is the week of the sixth, I would expect to see possibly beta nine. So it could be beta nine, or it could also be an RC build sometime in this week, or we could see both. We could see a beta nine on maybe a Monday or a Tuesday or even Wednesday, and then an RC build maybe on a Thursday or a Friday. And then the following week is when we could see iOS 15 released to the public. And if I had to take a guess on what day, I would say the 15th right here is when we could possibly see iOS 15 released to the public. So that's exactly three weeks away if that, you know, kind of prediction is accurate. Now, 
We could also see multiple RC builds. We could see, you know, 10 betas. It's really hard to say at this point. You know, I wouldn't say that we would get iOS 15 any later than the week of the 20th. I still think the week of the 13th is a good likelihood that we'll see iOS 15, but we'll have to wait and see on that. That is just my prediction as of now. So we're getting really close, which is super, super exciting. But yeah, guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, like usual, I would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss my iOS 15 coverage, especially when it releases to the public. I have a ton of content lined up and I think you guys will really, really enjoy it. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon. Thank you.